Oh, here we go. All right, so me and Manny haven't done a conversation episode in a bit. No, okay. what was the last really? One? I have no idea. What was the last one that we did together? Uh, oh, actually, I'm lying. We did the you, mayor. What? what? You can't ask me these questions. I don't even know what happened yesterday. Yeah, Wait, yeah. I'm following the mayor? <laughs> no, no. The mayor no. was right before me? You're following right now M-Dot, DJ M-Dot. From oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a good I one. I like that. That's a good one. Music, bro. music, yeah. Yeah, yeah and we had an uh, apocalypse barbecue. Yeah. Got you. So Very good. So we have, for those of you who don't know, um, City of Miami City police of Miami. officer, eight-year yes. veteran, yeah. Rafael Orda. Yes. And it's funny that uh, we connected through social media. Yeah. And I'm actually an admirer of what you guys are doing at the at, at Miami-Dade Police. Sorry. City of City Miami, Miami police. police. Thank you. There you go. Yes. And um, let's be and, correct. And Especially that we had the City of Miami mayor here. Yeah. <laughs> so City of Miami Police. Uh, I overheard you talking earlier that City of Miami was the first police station was in the United States to have its own podcast. A podcast, yeah, absolutely. No one had a podcast. We we and I give I give all that credit to my partner Nick and had the idea. He has his own podcast, um, off duty as well. But he came up with the idea a couple years ago, and ever since then. Uh, there's definitely a lot of podcasts coming up, and, and that's great. You know, that's the whole point. We, we try to to uh, lead the industry, you can say, which is the social media world in the police world, which is a whole different um, animal because at the end of the day, you do represent a, a police department and you do, you know, serve the community. So, you know, we want to make sure that what we're putting out there is um, has substance, quality, and serves a purpose. And so, we'll, you know... It's not easy, and it's not as free as if it was like a personal podcast where you're just free speaking. And yeah. you know, you you have to, um, and that's it's not that that's a hard thing to do. It's just you always have to keep in mind, you know, what's the overall goal, which is to reach as many people in the community as possible. And when we have an important message to put out, the podcast yeah. is like the perfect, the perfect thing, way to yeah. put it out there. So, so when you guys came up with this idea, what'd you do? Take it, take it to the chief, take it to how, yeah. how did that process go? Because I'm, I'm just in, in and on with the yeah. fact I, I come from the political world, so yeah. I'm saying, wow, this is pretty good how we have evolved. No, that you say, absolutely. Well, yeah, let's go talk to the chief and tell him we want to put this out. Yeah, there. thankfully we have a chief that understands the importance of social media. Yeah. He's, um, you know, always had our back with that and. Uh, so yeah, we'd have to run it by him. He was actually the first guest on our podcast Perfect. because we said, chief, come on the podcast and, and check it out, feel it out. This is what we're going to do. And he was on it. He loved it. He was like, what do you guys need? Let's get it done. And since then, man, we have, um, we've had motormen on, we've had our Marine patrol on and we, we basically give the officers a forum where they would never have to speak. Cause usually if we're going to put out a P let's say 4th of July is coming up, right? Like, hey, well, let's put out a PSA just to make sure people understand the dangers of, of, you know, drinking and boating and you know, everything. Uh, unfortunately, all these accidents that happen, look, Memorial Big Day, time, bro. Memorial Day is coming up, you yeah. know, look what just happened with, unfortunately with yep. that, that young girl. Yeah, was about so instead of just doing an old traditional style police, like, hello everyone, uh, this weekend is a, uh, and nothing against the departments that still do that, but that's very 1990. No, no. Yeah. The click it or take a little sign around here and, and you guys, there. Uh, you know, Spend the you money. Just said, yeah. You just said a little bit a little while ago, like swipe, like swipe. Swipe. You have yeah. about 0.5 seconds to catch somebody's attention. Absolutely. We understand the analytics. That's why we're assigned to this unit. It's, there's a lot of things that go behind. Um, we have three officers. We have a civilian that works with us as well. Shout out to Anissa. And she does some amazing work looking at the analytics and what's trending and how, um, you know, what's working and what's not working. So we follow those same strategies that any traditional social media influencer or, or, or private company would do. And like, we got to catch your attention. So you see a Marine patrol officer or a canine. We've had the canine on, but with the dog on the table, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, so wait a second. Now you might watch that a little longer than once you get them hooked then deliver the important yeah. message. So we like to, that's kind of like our philosophy. Let's deliver it in a fun, non-traditional way where people are like, really? The department's putting out a video like this? We've done dancing videos. I don't know if you guys remember a video that went viral not too long ago of Ultra of two cops dancing on the sidewalk right before Ultra. I did remember yeah. seeing that. If, now if you go back and look, that's me and my partner. Oh, uh, and so it's like, what's the whole point of that? Is that? Because then a lot of people are like, oh, you guys are just having fun dancing on the sidewalk. Well, no. Well, and getting paid. Let me not say I wasn't having fun. <laughs> I was in the city. <laughs> and, because I was having fun. But there's a purpose, and the purpose yeah. is to get – look, that video goes viral now. Yeah. So now you have the eyes on your page. So all the tourists and all the people coming in uh, that are searching Ultra, that are searching – if you go look what came right after that video, that video was viral. What came after that was what you can and can't bring into the park, parking. Um, the traffic on Biscayne Boulevard. So it's oh, like... So you have the hook, you hook them, capture, and then oh, you get the information. Capture the audience. Now let's deliver our important information. So, where if we just come out and do a, a video saying, hey, this is what you can can bring out. And we might get a thousand views compared to now right after that. We put together... And then we'll have an after action report that we'll show to the chief and we'll show to everybody. Say, hey, our ultra week, we did 
10 videos. In total, we had 3.5 million views. We had over 5,000 comments so that we show on paper the importance and how many people you're actually reaching. And, and quick question. Can you okay. associate that to like statistics and say like, listen, we were able to bring down, you know, drugs coming in through Ultra because of X. Have I mean, you it's, hard, to connect those things it's yet? hard to directly connect that, but it has it kind of goes without saying if you are getting that many eyes on this Absolutely. video That's what I was gonna say. there yeah. is an impact being made yeah 100% um because at, but departments, quantifiable you can't quantify no, it no but if you think about it traditionally departments whether it was like uh click it or take it or make sure you lock your lock your doors these are traditionally the way departments marketed those things was by flyers like oh, leaving it. a flyer on a business on a door in reality if you print out 10,000 flyers First of all, you got to get them printed out. Pay the money to get them printed out. How many people are actually taking their oh, time? So now. Thrown all over the place. Yeah. You got now, flyers flying all over exactly. the pollution so, everywhere. Think about the difference in posting a video that gets 200,000 views on a parking thing. Whereas that would have been. So now you got 200,000 people to watch a video that before maybe 200 people would have Brother, seen. Brother, I, I think this is spectacular. Because I oh. think it, re it relates with the people. Your cops that relate with people. Yeah. And I think that people relating with cops, I think it's important. It's a good thing. Because that whole thing of everybody saying, oh, no, todos los policías son unos pesados. All these cops are like this. Brother, for you to be at that level and like, you know, dancing. But yeah. hey, brother, I'm like you. Like you got to respect. You respect the law and we're good. Yep. I can dance here. You guys can do your thing. Everybody gets out of whack. Now, we, you know, we got yeah, we we to come into play. Yeah. But I think that's great. I was going to ask you, I think one of the main questions that I would like to ask, which is kind of similar, I think it's the way we connected ultimately. Yeah. You put out a very creative, very good video when we had, quote unquote, aliens <laughs> in Bayside. <laughs> And you actually put After Effects on it. Like, the production yeah. of the video was good, which I caught put, my like attention. I just did. I put the little alien yeah. in the video. Caught, my, caught, caught a day of Miami's attention, yeah. and we posted it, and it went Thanks for posting viral. It. Yeah. Viral. It went, it went, it went, and your face was now more recognizable within the local community. Yeah. How did that idea come about of you putting that report out? I guess that was like a PSA of yeah. like, okay, guys, this... This, we don't have aliens in the yeah. city. Yeah. As dumb as it sounds, <laughs> yes. people were in the comments saying Everywhere. we do have aliens. We so, had, so tell me a little bit about that. So, when I've seen a couple. It was a, <laughs> maybe. We'll leave that for another podcast. <laughs> but uh, um, it was a Friday. It was actually a Friday, like around 4 or 5 p.m. I'm, I'm, and I was uh, I was alone in the office on Friday. Uh, Nick wasn't there. Nick is my, my you know direct partner and Gio. And um, that video starts going viral. The original video of someone from like a balcony, like yeah. with this long thing, like a blurry thing. And they're like, this is a 10 foot alien. With and, shadows. Yeah, the shadows. <laughs> and it's like, why would there be so many cops just for some some juveniles? Because uh, that's what it was. It was some juveniles throwing fireworks. They were fighting with people. So, oh, okay. so we did have to call what was a citywide three. Uh, this is what a lot of people don't know. When when a city, it's in my eight years, there's only, that I've heard was two. There was one citywide three at something that happened at 11 years back with a shoe thing that they, people started rushing 11. They called it citywide three. And then that night, that was a citywide three. What does that mean for people? It means every patrol cop that's currently working, come uh, citywide. So, wow. so that's why you saw 100 police because you had every officer from... Little Haiti to Coconut Grove at Bayside because the officers that were there felt like it was a little bit out of control. Okay. And you can feel it. You get those goosebumps. Yeah, and you yeah, around yeah, and You're like, course. we're outnumbered by a thousand. Yeah. I need a citywide three. So that's what happens. And they saw all those people saying, my partner who was off, Nick was actually out on. And again, I give credit to Nick. He he He's quick. He's quick with uh, thinking about these things. And he's like, hey. We one well, number one, we need to address this because it's taking off. Right, you know, there's they're saying that we're hiding stuff. You know that the police department is hiding the stuff about aliens. But like we had really prominent crazy. like news stations talking, yeah, yeah, perpetrated that, that, that it was aliens, and that's when it became like because there's some things that maybe we'll throw a comment in the comments like guys, you know, this is, but yeah. then there's something that may warrant a video response. So it reached the level of someone like, but the fact that we had to like respond to like, hey, there's no aliens, it was a little funny. Yeah. Um. So that's why I had some fun with it, and um. Nick tells me, hey, if you do a video right now, we need to do a video addressing it. It's going viral because this. So, so I'm like, OK, I'm going to I'm going to address it. Just let everyone that there's no aliens. Right. And I threw in the at the moment, you know, <laughs> yeah. just, you know, and I put a little alien in, just to keep it light. At least this yeah. weekend. Yeah. Just so, yeah. At least right mm -hmm. now, you know, I saw some last week, but no, don't. I didn't see any. That was hilarious. But after that, man, that video took off. That video took off. Yeah. And when I tell you for the next month. 
everywhere I went, whether I was working my off duty at the bank, I have an off duty I work every Monday at Ocean Bank. People would walk in and be like, Oh, you're the alien cop. <laughs> Is there really aliens? You know that people would be like, Oh yeah, but for real, was there? And yeah. it's like, no, there wasn't. It aliens. goes to show you how gullible even, people are. Oh, even because my, people want to know maybe friends, it was hiding, it was you know, you're covering my, up. They think that like I know this big secret. Yeah, well, uh, apparently there was something called Project Blue Beam. I'm telling you, my inbox on social media was like, You're part of Project Blue Beam, you're covering up for the government. And I'm like It's crazy. And um <laughs> even friends of mine were like, Hey, man i saw I, I see you going viral that's hilarious huh? but but for real was there was there aliens no like, there no. was people actively fighting in the comments at each other like very aggressively yeah. uh defending that there was aliens yeah. and that this is all just no, today, no, wait, just today wait, i got what? a message from someone on on my on my uh personal social media i still get messages i just got a message oh uh they never they never address this they're still covering something up i'm just saying yeah they never landed it, in the days, like, in Biscay, well, the, the, to, their, to their point, the thing that I saw a lot was that apparently you're like radio communication is shut down, like a specific way, uh, radio wave. The, there was something that happened that, that night that was unrelated where, you know, where they related it to it. I want to I, I don't know, you know, I don't want to speak something that was untrue, but I know something happened that night with the airport or something. It just happened to be around the same time. So they were like, oh, look, that happened, and then this happened. They shut down, like, a specific set of yeah, radio waves. Yeah, was a yeah. specific something, that ha- but it had nothing to do with us in the city of Miami. That call was really um, a bunch of juveniles that were out of hand, which videos did go out about yeah. that, too. Though You saw there was a guy getting jumped in the street by some bunch of kids that had thrown a firework at his car. But what, and when he got what, out what of What was the- going on that day? That was... There was... I don't... I think it was just... It was a Friday. I mean, it was a Friday night. So a regular people- Friday. <laughs> yeah. Regular day in Miami. <laughs> That's what I'm just saying. What the Friday hell was going on that day? That <laughs> There was so many people out there. You got threatened. That yeah. was- got threatened there listen okay Crazy. so that's one yeah, okay yeah. the next one that we see a lot online that i'm sure people want to know about how do you guys react to this and i don't know if there's any way of fixing it doesn't seem like there is no oh. those intersections being blocked off and then you have the cars in the center doing yeah. the donuts and they're all down biscayne yeah how, how do you guys treat that what are you doing those we cases? have we actually have overtime details right now that are out there that are out there enforcing it um and i know i know all the departments are trying to right now it's um that's something new that in the police, uh, in a policing aspect, it's kind of like everyone's such strategizing, like how we're going to yeah. stop this. It's, it's difficult because remember, there's there's a lot of policies in place as far as like no chase policies unless yep. it meets a certain criteria. And these kids know that and they're just doing donuts. It's no, a traffic no. infraction. So, but it becomes very dangerous. So I, they wa- know the I, want, I want to say that there <laughs> is currently um, people that are trying to pass bills to be able to give us more power. Yeah. To, um, in those scenarios, that makes sense. Okay. To, to, but those are kind of like in the works, kind of like a bill that just passed. Um, and, and DeSantis, I believe, already did sign it and it goes into effect the beginning of, of next year is the harassing of officers with the camp with the cell phones. So now there there will be a we, we, which we talked about this on one of our on, on Nick's podcast. Um the statute basically states that you cannot be harassing um you know what an officer who's who's on duty and and working. Um so for example, let's say you're just yeah. like patrolling Bayside or something and I go up to a, with you at a camera and just start recording you, you randomly. You can record. It doesn't say you can't record. You're always going to be able to record a police officer. The difference is if you're recording or you're recording saying, hey, you're an effing pig or your right. mom. Right. No, no. You're yeah, no, because you're provoking. What you're doing is you're provoking Absolutely. your response right, from right, that right. officer. That- right. But that's a slippery slope because if you if they allow the power and then he does provoke a response and you got the response on video. Yeah. The general public perception is still going to be. Cops are being aggressive to people. Yeah, no, but you that's know? why. That's why. I remember, although I agree with the bill, yeah, you know, most, like mo- well, not most all officers have have a body cam, and in any situation, you do have to give a, a warning. You know, yeah. it's not just like oh, you oh no, you're in a jail. No, right, like true. sir, I'm, I'm I'm dealing with this, right? Or I need you to step, right? Uh, you know, to the, the sidewalk, side, right? right. And if well, the person's like, no, I don't gotta listen to you. I don't. Right. So now that statute gives it makes that a misdemeanor, yeah. which makes it arrestable. Well, gotcha. but you see what happened with New York and everything else. It just yeah, it's a provoking, because, and then no, everybody with the phone. Then, no, listen, I do not. Yeah understand crazy. how people want to go against a police officer i've been pulled over a handful of times you know the first thing i do is excuse me sir what do you want always <laughs> and but yeah. well, majority of the time it's a clean and yeah, simple I'll transaction well, get... and they move on with your day yeah. i don't understand how people want to like this person whether you like it or not has power over you yeah. in some degree you know it's just become in this generation it's become kind of like a thing to challenge the uh, authority authority yeah. of a police officer. And um, we see a lot more. But I'll tell you something else. To that point, I don't think it's become a thing to challenge authority. 
I don't think parents are showing that you need to respect authority. Oh, well, yeah, know? it's well, a domino effect. It's listen, a domino because a lot of because now a lot of those people that are bring, been raised up yeah. in that generation became parents. And Correct, and now they're trying to teach. But I was listening today to on the radio, kids. and I, I don't know what show it was, but the guy goes, "Bro, I was brought up to just say yes, sir." Yep. When you get stopped oh, by yeah. an officer, I go a little bit further. I so if I get stopped. All I do is I go straight to the glove compartment. I take out my 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 registration. I have the license. I put. The, I, I'm prepared. Yeah. And he goes, what do, you, "What do you do?" I go, "I don't know. I don't know what I did, but here it is. Yeah. Here's the license. You think I did something? That's fine. Yeah. You know, and ten times out of ten, when when you are, you just comply with an officer on a traffic stop. Ten times out of ten, they'll be cool. It's gonna be smooth. Yeah, there is no officer out there that is stopping you to incite anything violent or anything yeah. like that it's it's sometimes what happens can lead to an unfortunate situation if the person is being difficult when i you know if, you know since i became an officer i haven't been pulled over but I, i've been pulled over in the past and um i'm the same way comply you know yeah. everything if i you know and i still get the same way if an officer is behind me you know i'm like oh you, know, you get nervous and stuff yeah, like, of course so, so slow down worst <laughs> feeling in the world you're yeah. like Woo! Hey, like, oh, having an officer behind me even yeah. now you know when i'm off duty I'm like, all right but, but let me actually i have a question for you there when officers are driving and you're let's say you're behind someone do you notice if that person is like nervous and trying to get away from you and like moving oh, away 100%. from you 100% you notice really? it for sure 100% like you're talking about like if we're in if i'm in my patrol car yeah your patrol car but yeah, i would driving. i would think that nowadays with people on the cell phones that's 24 7 because you see people swerving because you see everybody like this man and then, oh, they go yeah. this. Oh, they go like this. So, and, then, and then you'll it's notice. It's like, that guy has to be drunk. You can see you can see when the person notices that there's a cop. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, <laughs> they're the best driver in Miami. Yeah. You know, they'll be on the Palmetto like, wah, wah, wah. All right, so quick what? Like, so then they start, okay, they notice you're there behind them. And do you feel like if they try to get away from you and speed away, does uh -huh. that, like, bring into question, like, okay, maybe I should pull this person over. They're trying to get away from me. I mean, it's all, that's up to the officer's discretion, you know, and especially me being a city, a city officer, for me, I have to, you know, Am I in jurisdiction? Am I not? Is it worth it? Am yeah. I going to put anybody else in danger? Because now if I go after this car, I'm on the Palmetto and there's a lot of traffic. Gotcha. So it's like everything is up up to um to your judgment. I have pulled people over because I've had I've had people, you know, uh, that are just driving reckless. And at that point, yeah, that's worth it. If you got someone that yeah, you're that's like, the point that you're in the you Palmetto. You're saying, I'm, sure you guys, cop? I'm sure you guys have had <laughs> exactly. You, you know, you've had times where you're like, man, I wish there was a I cop wish right I was here. a cop. So right there's now. times that I'm off duty and I'm like, man, I wish I was on duty. Right so those moments oh, wow. I when I that. when I am on duty and I see it, I'm like, no okay, possible. let me let me now enforce that. Yeah. And then sometimes oh, I'm late to work. I'm having a bad day or this and that. Yeah. Whatever it is. Welcome to the club. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah sometimes you get caught. Sometimes you don't. But yeah, and for look at the end of the day, we we live in a great country we have especially in miami where we have had a historically low crime and there's the reason is because um there's a lot of factors into play yeah. but it's when you police the right way yeah and you and, and you have a presence um we all benefit from it 100%. it's not like police want to do it just because because we have this pride like no we are the authority no it's because I, I, me personally i grew up in the city i love the city I want to see the city continuing to flourish. Yeah. I feel very blessed to be in the position that I'm in. Um, and I want to tell you that for the bad apples that are out there that make it more difficult for all of us, there are 99.9999% more amazing people out there on the street that people just don't see. Because yeah, That's good to know. Because, that's good to because know. they're out there doing good work yeah. and it's not a story. Which is you the know? reason why we kind of started this uh, conversation and, and these, these these little shows and episodes or podcasts yeah. that we're doing. And it was like we saw a lot of the content that's being put out on social media. Yeah. Uh, and majority of people put Correct. out the bad stuff of the city. Yeah. And we kind of had like an aha moment where like, you know what? Like we enjoy and benefit from the city a lot. We know a lot of people. We're like, why don't we just start talking about the good oh, things? You got the, the good thing. The restaurants, awesome. good people like you, different businesses, yeah. aspects of people, pol good politicians, people yeah. that can tell you uh, success stories. Yeah, I yeah. mean, sure. that's what you want to hear. You just don't want to see what the hell is going on always, you know, uh, 45 people running around in the beach yeah. being, you know, chased on right yeah. now. I mean, yeah, if you turn, and, and, and a lot of that is car accidents. And, and, and it's there. So there's a little bit for everything. Like, there's different networks, there's different platforms for the podcast. Yeah. Like, the one that you're doing also with the city which i think is wow, genius in the sense i mean yeah, I, in, in a way i mean it even gets to that you know that gen z -er in the sense of saying you know they're looking at this and they're saying they can relate they say cool. listen guys 100 you're coming in ultra be cool 
Yeah. Don't do this. Don't do that. And yeah. they're going to say. No, and at Ocho, I get stopped left and right. And I by, can people, imagine. by people telling me, oh, man, I saw your video. I loved it. Thank you for everything you do. And and it is. Um, I'm, uh, this 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 goes a little bit more personal. And I, I was mentioning it, mentioning it to you guys that be, before I became a cop, yeah. I was I was a rapper. I was a writer. Yeah, that, I was, that, 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 I was that, a music. that was a little funny to yeah, me. That I was, was good. I, I was a music writer. I, um, I, you know, I was a basketball coach at one point, too. And um, it's just I found a spot in the department now with the social media unit that I'm like, OK, I'm, I'm here. I don't know how I ended up here. The last thing I ever thought of when I became a cop was I'd be doing a YouTube series, be on a podcast. Oh, yeah. you know, I, when you become an officer, I, you know, I, I did my time on the streets. I did four years on the streets, two years, midnight, patrol. patrol. But I had the opportunity to come into this unit. And now I'm like, I really do have an opportunity to really connect with this younger generation and show them we're just we have our we have cops that are rappers. My partner is a comedian. My partner, Nick, was a comedian, is a comedian. He's one of the funniest guys I've ever met. But before <laughs> he became an officer, he did stand up comedy at the improv. He, oh, wow. You know, oh, wow. And that's why we have um, shout yeah. out to Robbie Day and yeah. those guys at the improv. Yeah, People yeah. Love us. We, we, we just did some stuff with uh, uh, Mario. Uh, Mario Ramil was yeah. was a. Uh, did a, a video with us about about three four months ago so we're collabing with a lot of these people for them to see you know what like yes i might be a police officer yeah. but when i take off the uniform i'm just like right. regular right, person right. That's I but i play every saturday and every sunday yeah. basketball with a lot of my friends uh that are police officers they're uh miami beach police officers okay. and they're some of the coolest people i know yeah. you, know, and they you would never know stories and stuff uh-huh. great people great people going back to you were saying when you were on the streets of patrolling mm-hmm. um this is a question that everybody always wonders, you know. Here we go. And do you I guys, have it in my mind, but I already know, know what you're gonna ask. Do you yeah. guys have ticket quotas? No, you know, no, there is no quota. That that one hundred percent. See another one that verified that there's no there really ticket is, quota. There really is no ticket quota when you're working patrol and and in the city of Miami right now. Um, you know, it's it, there's there's a lot of calls, and uh, at, there there's there's no. I don't want to say that there's no time to. to okay, be but out. let me ask you the question this way: If you're a cop and you go three months without giving a ticket, because that's what they were saying in the comments, okay. they're like, "Oh no, they have to have like certain contacts, you know." And yeah. you go two or three months without giving a ticket. They Are you gonna get no, called out no, or no? They can't. I mean, could, okay. you, could you get called out? I mean, if we're being honest, maybe you get called out, as in like, "Hey man, you haven't given a ticket in three months," you know? Like, but that's not a quota. That's just them being like, "Okay, so what have you been doing?" I've been answering 911 calls. I've been making contacts right. with the community. Gotcha. I've been, you know, um, there's nowhere in our policy, there is nowhere in any policy, in any police department where they can write you up, where they can do anything to you if you don't give a ticket or make an arrest or do nothing. That there, There's no quota for gotcha. any of that. Interesting. There you go. But, you know, it does make sense that they can say you had no contact. Of yeah. course. Like in three months, yeah. like, you know, you would be. I'd probably be the same way. You'd be suspicious. Are you, not, are you not patrolling anybody? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, and three months, nobody's done an infraction. If, <laughs> if you, if you worked, listen. If you worked for AT and T, yeah. And in three months, you haven't sold one phone. Right. Yeah. yeah actually, you know, your supervisor is gonna be like, "Hey, you haven't sold a phone in three months." So <laughs> can they fire you? <laughs> yes. But that's you know, different. Like, we're, but as a police officer, yeah. if you haven't done nothing in three Damn. months, I'm not gonna say they won't come to you and be like, "Hey, so what have you been doing?" All right, so, so I'm I, sure. I, I, I'm sure if you stop at least. 10 or 15 have no license. I mean, or suspended because everybody doesn't even know how sometimes they have suspended license because of the insurance situation. Well, so listen, this is a little bit more sillier. The other day, um, we have a client and it's a bakery. And we have many bakeries that are clients of ours, but uh-huh. there was a lot of cops in the front and the bakery yeah. decided to do something nice and they brought out coffee with donuts. Okay. And I was told through the client, just talking, <laughs> you know, they're like, listen, apparently when I gave these cops these donuts, they like felt insulted, like because of the because of the st- the stereotype the stereotype yeah. of like, like donuts. cops eat donuts. You know? oh, Is that bring, the, bring, or... bring those donuts to the city. Our city cops don't care. They'll <laughs> eat those donuts. Now we we get donuts all the time. No, no, no. We're in another level here, but we're at stone crab level. <laughs> yeah. But do you guys know where that came from? Like, I have no like idea the where, where with no. the with the police and they can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm sure they will if I'm wrong. But from my understanding, it was because uh, going way back. Um, the only thing that was open for the midnight patrol officers was a Dunkin' Donuts. It, ma- it makes sense. Because that was the only thing that was 24 hours. So it wasn't so much that they were there eating or, donuts, yeah. but that's where, you know. Krispy you Kreme was the one that was always 24 hours or open. Krispy Kreme, yeah. Krispy Kreme. <laughs> so that's why it was more of like a midnight officer thing. Yeah. Where like maybe people always, oh, the cops are always at Dunkin' Donuts. Well, that was the only thing open to get a coffee or maybe to get food or maybe to get some donuts. Yeah. But yeah. that is where that kind of like originated and became like, oh, yeah, cop. Look, I'm, I'm, I don't. 
I would like a donut. Like I'll take it, but I'm not yeah. like obsessed. And and I don't know many officers that are like obsessed with donuts. Well, most like officers that. now I feel like are more fit too, more into fitness. Definitely, especially yeah. here in Miami. We and, and I'll, I'll give that's another big um uh props initiative and, and thank you. I'll give to our chief. I actually just went the other day to uh he our chief has this new initiative basically that if you pass your um physical requirement test that you would have had to take in when you got hired, basically the same test you had to when you got hired, you'll get a a, a day off. So oh, it's wow. an incentive. So when I went out that day to do it on a Saturday to Curtis Park, I want to say there was like 100 officers there. Wow. And, and everyone in shape and everyone fit. And it's not just to get that day off, but our culture. And I want to say that's a Miami thing, too. Like our culture down here in Miami, like you really do have a lot of people that like it really pushes you to be fit yeah. um, and healthy because that's a lot more. That's one thing I will say with this kind of like generation we're in. It's it's really becoming a staple to like go to the gym and be fit and be healthy and the benefits. You see, if you look everywhere, someone's selling some product that's for your health or for yeah. your beauty or for your uh, for working out. So, tell me a little bit about uh, w before we started with the camera. We were talking about I love the sensor. You're telling me when you guys do the podcast and how you interact what's going on in real life. I mean, I was watching that video yeah. that, that was all the, how you go switch from that to, to body cam yeah, and you can grab, you know, the footage and then you guys put it, you know, it's like an episode of cops. Yeah. yeah we have, know, we have, we have what's called the, which started as the Miami police vlog. Okay. Um, and that Nick started that in 2015, 2016 was a huge success. He's got plaques for it over 2 million, um, uh, views on on many videos. Uh, um, over we have about two hundred and thirty five thousand subscribers on our our YouTube channel. Wow! And that uh, That's the a lot. the police vlog we have we have people coming all all the time to our station to to meet with us to meet us like from I'm talking from Germany from um from Brazil and then locally we just had a, a cop from Nashville two days ago he came specifically just to meet Nick. Um, and because these officers, they, they watch it and they're like, man, I wish my department, we are ahead of the curve when, when the police world that some, some departments are starting to do it now, but it's, it's hard to, to really find your niche and how you do it. But then I, I took the vlog and, um, and then I started what was called the city series. I just did the first season and I basically ride with patrol officers and, um, I'm the one vlogging. So I have the camera and I'm just, I'm just giving people a really raw uncut, um, experience of right. what it is like handling these 911 calls that some are very dangerous and some of the heroic things that for real that these officers do that no one gets to see. So to, to that point, before you go any further, what is the craziest thing you've ever seen like while you're out there? The craziest thing I've ever seen? Well, it would, ha it would have to be, for me personally, it would be, it would be uh, my my incident, the incident that, that I got into a shooting where – I, w I had just been on the street for a week, and oh. um, there was a uh, there was a guy trying to break a window of a car. I'll make a long story short, but uh, this was in Miami. I, in it actually happened in Miami Lakes. <laughs> I live yeah. in Miami Lakes, so I was on the way home from a midnight shift, and um, it's already cleared, you know, through the state attorney's office and everything. I got cleared, and um, so I can I can speak on it. But I saw a guy trying to break the window of a car. And I didn't know there was a female at the car in the time, so I'm kind of just watching from far, you know, and just giving observing, you, observing like what's going on here. And he broke the window, and then I heard a girl screaming. So I, when I went running over there, she was trying to get away. She was crashing into a bunch of cars, um, and she was able to get away. And then she crashed. And by the time I had ran up to the to the window, um, I see blood, and I'm like, oh wait, there's yeah. Something. And then I saw a knife, and then I put two and two together. Oh, wow. this guy is 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 the act of murdering her. You know, he was stabbing her. So. Unfortunately, there was no de-escalation time, you know, how we would be able to do if he was outside with the knife and like, hey, man, you know, no. Like, by the time I got there, she was already stabbed. So, um, Damn. you asked me what's the craziest thing I went wow, through was crazy. that where it's it's an unfortunate. How, how many times have you like been to a scene that like someone ends up passing away? Or well, no. As, very often or? Yeah. As a patrol officer, wow. you you encounter that. Quite a few times, you know, whether it's a homicide call or a natural death or, you know, a lot of unfortunately crashes, yeah. you know, you do see some bad accidents. And that's why we harp on with the drunk driving, because when I worked Coral Way Midnights, um, which basically Coral Way hugs uh, Coconut Grove and Brickle, you're yeah, right in the yeah. middle. So Coral Way Midnights, we would get everyone coming from the Grove and everyone coming from Brickle. And I worked from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. So that 4 a.m., 5 a.m. through time, those streets. That 4 a.m., 5 a.m. on a Saturday, Friday, you see some of the nastiest wrecks. Wow. wrecks. And I've seen, you know... I had one where um, these three girls, unfortunately, all uh, passed away. 
that they went straight into a wall and the car lit fire and come to the day and they were under the influence. And, you know, it really does change your perspective when you see, man, some of the most uh, gruesome things you will see is car accidents. Because even a shooting, if someone gets shot, it's not to say that it's not it's not gruesome, you know. It's it's very unfortunate. But when I talk about you, some of just the most gruesome. Things no, no, like yeah, yeah. In that's a car crazy, crash, bro. A you crash get, and a fire. You I mean, get uh, you know mangled and yeah. Yeah, and it's very <clears throat> so. Um, some of the worst calls you see as an officer is the is the car crashes, for sure. Um, but that's it's okay. So that's crazy bad. So what about a crazy a, a crazy good one like, yeah, like you know funny let's say or... a crazy good one like I don't know actually I have I have a good story something that that happened from you know, that not... city series that we could lighten up the mood here um so I had a and this is one of the reasons why I became a cop was I really enjoy enjoy speak uh, speaking being with the community and I, and that's why I knew this 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 job was for me um, I was out recording an episode of that city series we were in Alapata and. Um, as I'm recording, one of our officers had on his car. I thought it was hilarious. It was Christmas time. So, you know, little reindeer ears that people yeah, put on their windows? Yeah, yeah. A patrol car. There's a burglary car that goes out, lights and sirens. So we're on the way to Alapada on a burglary car, lights and sirens. We're running. And a, a patrol car passes us with reindeer ears. <laughs> and I'm like, I got to record that cop because that is, you know, that's, that's hilarious. That's a good one. So then we get to the car. Reindeer the, running yeah. to the scene. So I'm like, imagine people just like hearing the cop coming. And he's got little reindeer ears on his car. But it's not a nice cop. <laughs> he's a little, little, he had the, there comes a reindeer cop to arrest my ass. So so the Beverly car ended up being, um, you know, it, it was nothing serious, thankfully. But as I'm I'm recording the reindeers, the words are coming out of my mouth. I'm saying, you know what? This, this is funny, but this would actually attract little kids. You know, and as I'm saying that, I kid you not, a little eight-year-old. Comes out, was he like eight? You gotta be like seven years old. This is like 11 p.m. on a one on a oh no, like on a Friday. He comes in a police hat, in like a little police outfit, and he's like, I hear policia, policia. And when I look back, what I'm saying like happened. Like I'm telling them that he's like the, the ears. So then this little kid um starts telling me how much he loves police. And then I see his parents and I walk over. He's like, Oh man, he's always wanted to be a cop. And then I, the little light bulb clicked. We had a toy That's drive. Incredible. We yeah. had a little toy drive. Um that was happening uh, at Boxer Gym, which we've worked a lot with Boxer Gym. Yep. Shout out to Mateo and them over there at Boxer. They do amazing work. And, uh, man, I brought, I got in contact with the kid's parents. And that Sunday surprised him. And we took him. And he got a bunch of toys. A kid I met on a call in Alapata. And I, I have a video of it. It's on it's on our police Instagram page of me surprising him, taking him into and picking yeah, up all the, the, toys. the toys. So that was, a, that was a great experience. That was fun. I mean, uh, I had another question here. These are just questions that I've seen from people that just put stuff up, yeah. you know. Um, how do you guys usually feel about, like, the political environment that's taking place now with how the community, not everybody, but mm, I think it's more the younger oh, but- generation – you know, feel about like you know defunding the police yeah. and getting rid of police forces, which is completely like crazy, yeah. asinine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not to say other words. Uh, from, Do you guys you feel know. like people don't like I, care about us as much anymore? You know, don't think they need us. I will say this: being a police officer in Florida, um, it's a lot different than being a police officer, a police officer in some of these other states because yes. the governor here really does, oh. um. Uh, back us in Florida that, in that aspect <laughs> and and it makes you as an officer feel comfortable doing your job um those how do how do how does that make us feel when when you're out there you know you're giving you I think that you're putting your life on the line yeah 100 because when you're up when and and when you're the patrol guy and you're the front line officer that's going to get dispatched to that shooting um and it ha- or, or that stabbing and you have a family too you know and and, and they'll they'll run through your mind cuz it happened to me many times where i'm running that emergency call and you know you're 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 focused you know you're very focused and we have some of the best if not the best officers in the country um but you do understand the danger and what you signed up for Absolutely. and that one day if what we call the devil comes knocking on your door you need to answer you need to be ready um and then you hear people wanting to defund and this and that. And you really just have to put that noise to the side and understand that becoming a police officer, you do it not for um, you do it to help the people and also for your personal satisfaction to know that you're making a difference. And whether the people respect that or not is on them. But if I was to because don't get me wrong, sometimes we're all human. Sometimes Absolutely, you see things brother. and you were like, oh, my God. But you really sometimes have to put that to the side especially as an officer that you're held to a higher standard and understand that 
the political environment that we live in right now is very is a big tension, you know, between the both sides, probably more than than it's been ever in this country. We know there's a big election coming up yep. and we already know and, and hope that it'll be peaceful, but always prepared to to protect the city if we have to. Um, and I will say, though, for the most part, we don't to go back to your original question. Again, thankfully, here in Florida, yeah. we have it's like a different. It's, it's, a, it's different, a different. Yeah. Look, if you the, the other day, and people can protest. People can protest. We have the freedom to protest. But like uh, not too long ago, when when there was a there was a protest, they started trying to do that snake thing on the boulevard. Oh, um, yes, like yeah, a no, weeks sorry, back. Sorry. No, no, Orlando, no, no, to Orlando, no. Uh, no, it was here. It was here on 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 Biscayne Boulevard. Oh, I don't know. Right, oh. in, right in front of the where they always do the part, like Oops. the torch, the the, <laughs> the, the torch uh, there, and they tried to start doing what's called like the snake, where they all put they put PVC pipes and yeah. the interlock inside of the pvc pipes so oh, like, um crazy. but instantly instantly we uh stopped it our officers that were there they had the green light if they try to block because at the end of the day, we try to block the intersection oh, you're crazy, bro. so so oh, we had the your your call you can cause yeah. fatal accidents so we responded immediately props to all the officers that were there they did an amazing job and then this is where the difference is and this is why here in florida um uh, you know, we we really do have uh, still at least that respect in that we can at least do our job. Yeah. Because got them off of the street and they want to protest on the sidewalk. You're more than welcome to. Where in maybe some other states where they're, oh, you know what, just let them go, just leave it. And then the governor came out the next day, Ron DeSantis, and he and he actually um he mentioned it. He he said, you know, if you saw Miami, they tried blocking the street and the yeah. Miami cops. It didn't let that happen. So you know, as a as a department, it's it's all about the leaders, brother. Yeah. It's all about and the leaders. Everything trickles down from the top. It's all about the and, leaders. And again, at the end of the day, we all want. Have, have 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 you ever had a situation where you arrest somebody just based off of like social media um, content that they're putting out and things like that? That I know of, no. No. Oh, okay, everybody, you're safe. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> just. The, yeah, no, anything of uh, social media content alone. No, now could there be something that that uh, some, you guys look into some that type proof? Of stuff or? Yeah, we will get messages sometimes. People will send us videos like, "Hey, this is oh going yeah, on. some weird and ass thing we'll, that's we'll going do, on there." We'll do is we'll forward it to the right uh, detective uh, unit. Gotcha. So like we'll get we'll get um videos sometimes that someone took of someone like beating a kid in the backseat of a car. No, or no, something. yeah, and then we'll, we'll 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 give that video over to our special victims unit. Or if someone posts a video, oh, in Brickell at three in the morning from a balcony of a guy beating up his girlfriend. Correct. We'll send that wow. over to our domestic violence unit because sometimes people instead of calling nine one one, they'll record it and then they'll wow. message it to us. That's why we have on our Instagram. This is not monitored twenty four seven. If you see something, call nine one one. Nine one one. But we do get sometimes on social media. How oh, often do you guys get videos from people showing like crimes? I mean, not super yeah. often, but it happens. It happens every now and then. And again, we forward it to the right to the right uh, investigations, and then they'll take it from there. But gotcha. I think I, I think it'll get bigger. The people sending videos. Yeah, of course. The bigger you get, little, the more. Little, well, a lot of people don't know this is actually a technology now. When you call nine one one, let's say you call nine one one, and because something's happening right in front of you, you see you see some uh, people fighting with a knife, or you see someone fighting his girlfriend. Our dispatchers now can send you, a, and they will. They'll do it now. They send you a link instantly because they, yeah, they have your though. number. And when you click that link on their text, you basically can now live stream to the dispatcher. Wow. So so with the smartphone, which everyone has smartphones these days, so you click that link within, uh, I don't know the name of the program, but we've highlighted it many times. You get that link, and that way the dispatcher can see what you're looking at and re- relay it to the wow, officer. that's amazing. And I already tell the officer, hey, the guy's wearing a red shirt and blue jeans. Or, hey. Uh, Imagine, right? The, the, you know, how quicker yeah. you can get somebody like that and we have a versus real- the fact that you're nervous. You know what happened? What color did they have? I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. Is it true that you guys have these new technologies now that like read the license plates as you're driving? Yeah, but that's that's been out for a while. Like the LPRs, the license plate readers. Most cities have them when you. But can... is the car always active while you're driving around? Or well, no. There's some that are stationary, so there's some that are positioned, you know, and then there's some that are on cars. Like if you've oh. ever seen a police, well, and, and you know, there's there's also private companies that have that's, it for like. That's always going to that for right now. That that have like yeah. cameras that there's like four that two point back, two point Got forward. You. So you can basically drive up and down the street, and any car that's passing you opposite, and any car in front of you, it's gonna run the. It'll, it'll listen. They're the putting that. They're putting this system around my my house area and that whole neighborhood called the Flock, mm-hmm. which is any car that comes in and out through those areas that that thing just picks up to see if the car is stolen, if the yeah. car 
is any suspiciousness, it caused the police because that averts a lot of those cars passing by the areas to try and rob houses. No, yeah, I think, and that's why when you asked when you asked the question earlier if we could directly relay any social media stuff in a drop in crime, no, but we can say that in this technology era that we're living in, yeah, there is a reason in a drop in crime because it's becoming a lot harder to commit a crime and not get caught oh, because of oh, all the technology, will... because of all the camera, because of all you know, it, it's it it does it does help. And now what you have to find is make sure that you have found a level of being able to police with technology or you're still not infringing on anyone's rights. You don't want to, you know, go too far into it. Those decisions are for people, you know, higher above me. But for the most part, um, you know, I want to say the technology that we have is used for one purpose only, and it's just to, you know, we all have a passion to to catch a bad guy. Yeah. When you become a cop, what is it? Go back to the natural thing. Why do you want to become a cop? Because you want to catch bad the, boys, the bad, bad guys. Boys. Yeah. And that's <laughs> I was going to ask you that as, uh, uh, before we close up. Like, um, do you have right now a drop in people signing up to be a police officer, or is it like on the rise? And it, if, 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 you know, for whatever answer you have, um, for any kid out there that wants to be a cop or, or any little boy or girl wants to be a cop, like what kind of advice would you have to them? No, absolutely. Um, it definitely in the, in, in this, uh, environment we're living in now, it is a little bit, uh, Tough. harder to yeah. recruit because people that may be like, oh, I'm not sure because, you know, let's, let's just be honest. Like being a cop these days, you, you do get a lot of, um, you know, a lot of flack. So what's the word I'm looking for? Flack. Yeah, yeah. You get a lot of criticism. Sure. It's a little bit harder to do your job. Um, but for, and the pay is not going up? But the pay, we our pay has gone up. Okay, good. We actually, and, and Shout we out actually, to the mayor. Thank you to the to, to <laughs> well, our, no, the no, whole thank city. You our, thank you to our union. Yeah, you, and, yeah uh, the city. Who fought for us for, for, a, for a good contract that actually uh, we got a, a pretty beneficial contract. And um, so pay-wise, our pay has gone up. So I'll recruit a little bit here. You know, if you're thinking about becoming yeah, a cop, the, the pay the pay has gone up a lot than since good retirement. I, since I when I got, a, I'm gonna retire with a full. I, you know, at the end That's of the day, like, I'm 36 now. I've been on eight years since I was 28. This job has given me the ability to have a family, have kids, support that family, buy a home, um, cool. and <laughs> and and pay for. Unfortunately, in an economy that. Everything is expensive. Yep. Publix or whatever. Yep. Especially in Miami. Yeah. Everything in Miami is it's it's but this job will give me the ability to retire at fifty three for me at twenty five years with a pension for the rest of my life. There really? you go. Um and uh so that's the age I had to come back to work. Yeah. <laughs> I started working back at fifty three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I don't does that mean I'll just stop working at fifty three? I mean still young, but at least Oh, you'll you know, have a spot here at the day in Miami. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, maybe I'm if you guys just... are hiring, I you know I'll come through, I'll be on the podcast. <laughs> But yeah, man. So to anyone who's thinking about it, I'll say it's it's an amazing, amazing career. If you really enjoy helping people and don't want to work, I, one thing that for me, when I really was looking at it, I, like I said, I did music, and I was always like, I can't work in an office. Like I can't, I can't, right. I, I can't no, work from that and, world. And, and and nothing against the people who do who do or anything like that. Just for me, I, I was like, what could I do? And and the more cliche thing to say, but it's it, things become cliche because it's just the general consensus. Yeah. I really wanted to do something where I felt like I made a difference. Yeah. Where at the yeah. end of whatever I chose to do, I feel like at least those years were worth it. It wasn't just like thrown away to something else. And very early on in my career, I'm talking about like the fir- well, obviously the first week I get into an incident where I saved a girl from from dying essentially was like worth it alone you know everything else in my career is icing on the cake if i do nothing else yeah but um from then on i have i have met incredible people because of this job because for everyone that does give us flack or everyone let me not um let me not mention or not not mention i know i said that terrible i butchered that but let me mention the people that do give us praise and because we do have a lot of people that will stop us and be like, hey, thank you for what you do. Hey, you want some food? Hey, you know, and I thank you, you know. And, More of those than the other ones. You know, we do. We really do. Yeah. And and uh, and that always feels, it's gratifying. It's gratifying to no, know no, that you still appreciate Wait, that, that, it. Yeah. But do you guys have any plans to, I see it online right now. Do you guys have any plans to incorporate like these AI dogs or like these AI humanoids? Are you guys worried about that in the future? Or? Um. That I know of, no, but I'm sure there are in the police world. You know, like we're, we're in technology wise, that the police, the policing in general in this entire country is always there's always a new technology. Yeah, whether well, it's the LPR system, be. whether it's the real time crime center, whether yeah. it's you know facial recognition. Where so Drones, in the position this, in, the, in the position I'm in, I can't honestly, I don't know anything off the top of my head, especially with AI. But AI is here and it's coming, and I guarantee you that in the police world, we're gonna have to jump on that because you can't get let put behind the like curve. Terminator style. Yeah, maybe we'll have like some minority oh, report yeah, stuff. Yeah. He's been watching too much movies no. this week. That's no, the but there is an AI dog up north. 
they have yeah, there yeah, is. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. It. I got videos of it. Yeah. He, like, I mean, the other day I saw him like so, breaking down. Yeah, that's what I was gonna, gonna tell you. Somebody's up there. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so it's All like right. a, what is a robot? It's, it's a, a robot, robot dog, dog, and it yeah. came from MIT. It's a robot dog, and he follows instructions and stuff, and he moves around and he moves quick. It's pretty. You haven't seen that video? I haven't seen it. You check it out. I got it. Which is the one that spits fire? Yeah, well, they could. That's the thing. A, they a, could, a dragon? They could put a gun onto it. They could put a gun. Yeah, sure. A flamethrower. Those are yeah. those we're gonna send, to war. Yeah. <laughs> send it to war. Yeah. Send it, Rafa. Uh, yeah, a pleasure, brother, my friend. No a pleasure. And I, well, I was to gonna say, back. we in a day in Miami are proud to have you guys, and we support all the lady and men in the blue, bro. Yes, 100%. all of them, one hundred percent. Thank no. you guys so much for having me. It was great, and, and thank, keep, I keep on doing... with the. I keep you doing with the fact yeah. of the yeah, Miami sure. site. That's great. I appreciate yeah. it. It's man. Amazing. Thank you guys. Hey, we're gonna we gotta post that one. Yeah, to show that one with the, the video that he. Oh, took. you gotta it's see sick. now the the. City Miami allows us to collaborate with uh, oh. with, the, uh, with the Instagram. Hey, we'll co- we're the, I'm, I'm the one who does <laughs> oh, okay, good. it. So if well, you <laughs> policies against send, that, yeah. send it over, send it over to us. We'll, we'll, we'll collab with we'll that. Collab one. With That'll be guys. great. Let's Thank do it. Thank you, my man. Thank yeah, you, brother. You got it, bro. Let's take a picture. Let's take a picture.